ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to DiabloCast, your Diablo 3 podcast. It is Friday, April 27th. I'm your host, Dennis Force Duhamel. Joining me this week, we have got Jaded. Welcome back. Hey, what's going on? And Mr. Jesse Cox. Hello, sir. I was cramming the last of my Chipotle in my mouth. I'm good to go. Damn. Still eating at the start of a cast. I'm very professional. I'm Un- sorry. It was Chipotle. <laughs> unprofessional, I'm taking it, it over you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, we are just but a few weeks away from the launch of Diablo 3, and, you know, there isn't a ton of stuff to talk about. We've had a whole bunch of hubbub, uh, nothing really major, I guess with the exception of Jay Wilson's little visit. But we still have a lot of discussion, nevertheless, even if we are just kind of rehashing old topics. Uh, For discussion today, we'll be going over elective mode visibility in the game, WASD movement, Diablo 3 graphics, and I guess Blizzard graphics in general, just because they all kind of follow along the same theme. Also be discussing the level of difficulty in the game and whether or not it's a guided experience or rather how much of a guided experience we think it is. And then once more, a reminder that Diablo 3 PvP is not competitive. They just, they have to keep telling us get our hopes up and they're like nope it's not competitive just in case you were hoping it is not going to happen it is super sad starting off though we'll be talking about the witch doctor spotlight that was the class highlighted this week in the what is it what do we want to call it like the hype page the diablo 3 hype page there's i think there's a real name for it i don't know i guess hype page works but yeah it's the witch doctor this week So as with the prior weeks, we have a little bit of information on the Witch Doctor, a nice little video to go along with it, which is going to include uh, sorts of fancy stuff like a little bit of a backstory, um, and then also some gameplay. Gameplay, got to see some new new areas and new... uh, Did you guys happen to watch the video? We got to see the Gargantuan in it. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, well, I was just going to say, yeah, I checked it out, and uh, initially... Witch Doctor wasn't a big class for me. Like, it's kind of it's kind of towards the end of the scale of do I want to play this or not. Even though I love all the classes, but after watching this video, I was just like, I want to actually roll that right now. Yeah, I think that Gargantuan specifically, I was just like, wow, that's really awesome. I can't recall if we have seen it in one. I think we saw it at one point. I can't really recall though whether or not we've ever actually seen that before. That was the first time I actually remember having a clear visual indication of what the thing looked like, but I was like, wow, that's really awesome looking. You were going to say something, I thought? (laughs) No, no, yeah, it was the first time I think we've seen the Gargantuan. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of discussion about it, people wondering what it looked like, and now we know it's uh, freaky looking. What about you, Jesse? What would you think of the video? I, I loved it, and uh, I have the exact same opinion that it's one of those things. I think I said this literally like 12 podcasts ago that there was, I guess there was like a, a poll they had where it was a list of uh, what people wanted to play or something like that. And, mm. and I think the Witch Doctor was like at the very bottom. It was, yeah. And I remember at the time saying that this is one of those, those classes that people are going to be like, Eh, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to play, like, you know, a badass demon hunting super killer with arrows first, right? But I have a feeling that it's... The Witch Doctor is something that the more you see of it... And I said this at the time, that people are going to see it in-game and be like, damn, I want to play that. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to go... Because immediately, the first reaction a lot of people had was based off their looks, right? Like, they, they weren't very... There wasn't a lot of sex appeal to them. They didn't look like badass. They were like, Ed, how'd you go, Nick? <laughs> right? And I think that will change dramatically based on the abilities they have. And I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah, I, I think especially, too, that it's going to be a big thing where um, with the later tiers, I mean, the Gargantuan specifically is a, is a later tier ability. And uh, once people get access to stuff like that, it's going to be pretty intense. I mean, even things like just like mass confusion, is so amazing. I mean, Mass Confusion, the ability to turn enemies <laughs> against one another, like stuff like that, is just unreal. And then you've got AoE Fears, you've got the ability to, to go invisible with Spirit Walk, and then you have, of course, got all the minions that you can play around with and stuff like that. I mean, there's there's really a lot of cool aspects to the class, and I definitely think that you're right, Jesse, that as time goes on, people kind of realize how cool it is and uh, probably want to roll an alt almost immediately. So it's pretty exciting. Plus, you can well, rain the- down frogs from the heavens or from wherever from the clouds yeah. above. <laughs> That's the thing, like out of all the skill sets in this game, 
the witch doctor easily has like the most outrageous hilarious mechanics and visuals to, to any of the classes right so yeah uh, as we see those in in the coming days i think people will warm up to the class a lot more yeah and maybe i i, I think they i think they recently actually even redid the poll I think there was recently another poll where they were asking people what class they want to play at launch, and uh, I'd be interested to actually take a look at that uh, once it's complete. I'm not sure it could already be complete right now, but uh, just to see if that's changed since the last time that was asked, and if people are now more favoring the Witch Doctor uh, since this video was released, and since they get to see a little bit more of what the class is capable of, and uh, some of its cool abilities and features and everything like that. But yeah, pretty awesome. So uh, feel free to go ahead and t head on over to the Diablo 3 launch promotional site to take a look at that video yourself and to learn some more about the wonderful Witch Doctor. We also had a few more unlocks on the site. Uh, developer Diary number 3, BlizzCast 17, and then also a little excerpt from uh, Diablo 3 The Order, which is a book that will be launching on the 15th with the release of the game. Uh, and BlizzCast number 17, that's uh, I guess another video we could mention. They do some discussion in there uh, talking about the design of the game. They really focus on that. So if game design is something that you're interested in, you might want to take a look at this. Uh, it goes a little bit into detail about the design process for Diablo 3, which obviously is pretty awesome. And we are but three unlocks away from the wonderful, amazing video that will come. A battle between Tyrael and some demons and stuff like that it's gonna be really awesome i can't wait to see that uh probably um, if i had to venture a guess i would say that that would just it's just gonna come at the last week i mean again i know this whole unlock process is supposed to be based off of like facebook likes and activity uh on the site but blizzard has direct control so they can unlock it at whatever heck pace they feel like so uh, i expect to probably see that on the last week once we get the final class reveal which is going to be next week, and that'll be the wizard. So it should be exciting. Yay! Best class ever. By the way, I just want to point out, I was super excited to see this final clip. Like I was like, "This is me. I, mean, I can't wait to see this video." Now I don't want to see it because I don't want to spoil anything from the game. I've, I've hmm. my spoilers are off. After I um, there's there's a video, not video, but I guess it's it's an in-game clip of some sort that it, I'm not even going to say here. It's massive spoilery. That is floating around. It's sort of like the um, the one that we found last week or the week before. The clip that was, of Imperius or what? Or yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like it's like you know, it's a GIF image, but it's yeah, it's something much spoilery, and it's floating is around it the cinematics? internet. I'm not even gonna mention it. It's cinematics. Yeah, I'm not even gonna mention oh, okay. it because it sort of ruined stuff for me. And I was like, well, I'm not watching <laughs> anything else from now on. <laughs> Yeah, anything that's cinematic based, I don't even want to see it. Yeah, you know, it's a and it's a tough time for people like you, Jesse, who are really into the story and experiencing it for the first time. As we get closer to launch and more information and stuff gets leaked or uh, placed upon the internet, it's it becomes difficult to avoid it unless you specifically uh, make make focus in doing so. Like you specifically try to avoid those things. But even then, it's still hard if you happen to go onto the internet. Speaking of the internet, have you guys seen the the Zerg Rush thing on Google? Yes. Kind of amazing. Yeah. That is Well, awesome. like, what the heck prompted this? This seems so random to me. Is there some backstory that I'm not aware of that you guys know about? or? No, it just sort of showed up. I don't really know why. I guess because it's, it's almost part of the cultural vocabulary now. Like, if you say someone's getting zerged, I guarantee mm. 7 of 10 people will know the reference of what it's referring to. Yeah. Like, getting swarmed by something. Right, and so I think that's maybe because I mean, in in countless games, right? Like if people are rushing at you, they're zerging you. Like if if they, sure. if they all come to, if they all come to one area, so I mean it's maybe it's just become that level of cultural awareness of it. It's I don't just know. it's like, are, I mean I'm assuming like someone who works at Google is a huge StarCraft fan. <laughs> because well, they actually compete in Day Nine's tournament, don't they? Oh really? I I had no idea. Yeah, they, you know, all the companies come together and, and do battle. That's I'm pretty really, sure. really funny. So Google's, Google's part of that? Yeah. That's a riot. That's just, I just thought that was great. I'm like, you know, hats off to you, Google, for being so uh, so culturally aware, <laughs> I suppose. And what's, yeah, and what's great about it is it isn't just some stupid, like, oh, these are some Zerg, and the Zerg, they took the O's, and the O's 
are, are it's like you're playing the game. If you watch them long enough, they're the patterns and how they move is like dead on. For like Zergling like, movement. Yes, Starcraft it's one Zergling so movement fun. or Yeah, and like each of the, the sections of the page is part of you know, like a base. And so the Zerglings like come in and then they come in waves, like more keep coming because it's like the guy's still producing more and more and more and just sending them. <laughs> It's really clever. I was like, this is kind of awesome. That's really, did you really did fun. you let them actually eat the whole page? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What happens? Because at the, at the end, uh, they all form up and spell two letters GG uh, in the middle <laughs> of the screen. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is a riot. Oh, my gosh. Hats off to Google. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Back on to Diablo, though. <laughs> Battle.net mobile alerts. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, we now have access to... Battle.net mobile alerts and how this is going to work is you can have alerts sent to your phone and this is going to keep you up to date on your account and it will let you do things such as unlock your Battle.net account, remove an unwanted authenticator, recover your account name and reset your password. So this is just another layer of Blizzard security and you know it's cool we've talked about this I think it was last week or the week before we were talking about you know how important account security now is especially with Diablo 3 and the Real Money Auction House and they just keep layering it on there's the authenticator and now we've got the ability through our mobile devices to remove authenticators if someone say hacks our account and puts an authenticator on it which was a big issue that was happening to a lot of people or um, recover your information such as your account name and your password this is pretty cool I guess there's really no reason not to have this huh I, I think it definitely is one of those things that I wish I would have had I remember vividly when my WoW account got hacked at the end of Wrath of the Lich King and I w it was like 4 a.m. I'm asleep. I get a phone call from one of my guildmates who I didn't even know had my phone number. He was like, dude, are you online right now? I'm like, no. He's like, someone's like online and he's selling stuff and he's going through the guild bank. And I was like, um, what? <laughs> I, d I seriously, and I hopped about a bed. This was puberty, was like, Jesse, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently that's what I was, yeah. <laughs> what, guys? So, and I like jumped out of bed. I'm half awake. I'm in a, just a daze. Logging in, find that my account is completely hacked. I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. A simple m machine like this that would have been like, like, or an app that would have been, hey, stupid, someone's on your account, would have saved so much time and effort. I, I, this is, this is, I'm so happy Blizzard has. Yeah, this. I mean, it's, it's a good, happy. it's it's a good thing, and you know, having that again, just that extra layer of security. Uh, what about you, Jay? Do you think this is something you're going to use? Are you a mobile app kind of guy? Uh, I'm not going to use it. I definitely see people, you know, getting use out of this. I think it's a good thing. But me, myself, uh, as someone who sits in front of the computer 16 hours a day, I don't, I don't really see any use out of it. Good, because I'll be hacking your account later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't use it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. I had to AFK again. Did, did, did this happen last week? Did I have to AFK randomly in the middle of the cast because my girlfriend locked herself out? Uh, it wasn't Diablo cast. It was uh, that opening. Yeah, it's when I did a video with you, Jaded. That just first, happened. Yeah, first yeah. off, first off, let's not pretend that you have a girlfriend. <laughs> all right. Oh, Mom right, was right, outside right. with groceries and had to help her. <laughs> it was my cat. My cat <laughs> ran kid, out. It was. It was my four cats were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, I think the, the, you know, this, again, the extra layer of security is going to be really awesome, really beneficial for people. And if you plan to partake in the Real Money Auction House, and if you plan to have that sort of sensitive information online in this game, then it's really kind of a no-brainer, and I don't, I don't see any reason not to have this. It's going to be a good idea. Diablo, funny. Hell yes, says Blizzard, as they go ahead and post up some Diablo-related comics. They were okay. Kind of funny, I suppose. Uh, you can check them out officially on Diablo3.com. And, yeah, if you want to get a good chuckle on the Diablo universe. I actually did see one that I thought was really humorous, uh, talking about the fact that in-game, whenever loot drops, it like propels itself up into the air and then lands on the ground instead of just like falling from whatever you kill or whatever you destroy. And so the comic had this barbarian going up to this barrel, destroying the barrel, and then an axe flew up and hit him in the head and he died. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty humorous. I, I actually think that'd be a really funny um, 
uh, like YouTube skit because I know kids kids are down with the skits these days. <laughs> where it's like you know it's characters from Diablo three and they're going through a dungeon killing monsters and whatever, and the monsters explode and they all have to run and duck for cover because there's just falling weapons, <laughs> right? And so it's, it's so they can barely get through the dungeon because people keep getting killed by the different weapons and they're like, it's horrible. Why would they do this, right? I think that'd be a funny skit. Yeah. Get on that, YouTubes. The uh, the current comic, the one that they had highlighted, shows a skeleton hiding in a barrel as they're trying to figure out a way how to sneak up on on us, the hero, venturing through Sanctuary. And their bright idea was, I know, I'll, I'll just hide in a barrel. I'll surprise them by popping out of the barrel. And I like to think that they've been in there forever. And they're, they're like fermented. Fermented skeletons. I, guess, I don't know why. Just... Yeah, fun. <laughs> I just like how it sheds light on such an absurd thing. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many weird game mechanics that you just you take never for you don't question while you're playing. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. And so this just sort of sort of sheds light on, hey, this is kind of bizarre. What would actually go? What would actually happen behind the minds of you know these skeletons? And that's and it's funny because just like comedy in general, that's like a big driving force behind it. You take these basic mundane things that everyone deals with every day, or like we deal with in these games, and then you just you you, you look at it from a slightly different angle. You're like, wait, this is actually kind of really stupid. <laughs> and I'm going to tell <laughs> yeah. you why right here. So, yeah, I find it pretty humorous. Uh, big fan of these comics, actually. I do quite enjoy them. So take a look again. That is over on Diablo3.com. It's going to be posted right there on the official page. I uh, wanted to take also a quick moment to wrap up the open beta discussion. Uh, obviously, open beta took place last weekend, and hopefully most, if not all of you, got to participate in it. Uh, there were all, all sorts of issues that did occur, and there was a, a full listing of most of the issues that uh, people were having, such as error 12, error 33, 37, 2400, and all sort of variations of numbers. Uh, but in a post by Bashock, they went over kind of what, the, what these meant and what they're doing or what they have done to fix them. Um, and, you know, this is really, it's important for people to realize as, as much as they were happy to let you test out the beta, this was Blizzard making like adjustments to their servers and it was a it was a stress test for that purpose like it wasn't so much like oh we want everyone to have a fun weekend it's like we need to figure out how our servers servers can handle this load so that at launch we'll be all set so all of these errors and all this downtime and all these issues that was something that they expected and that they're actually I'm assuming kind of glad it happened because they could hammer it out and deal with it over last weekend rather than having all these issues once the game officially goes live. Um, so it is it is good that they did this. Um, and although some downtime did occur, actually a lot of downtime occurred for a lot of people, um, you have to keep in mind that that's kind of the point. This is a beta. And it's funny because I saw, I saw a lot of complaints about that weekend. And the thing that struck me the most is I, I saw I would see people say, wow, the demo was really crappy. And I just scratched my head like, do they not know this is beta? Like this, <laughs> this wasn't a demo of the game. There's a stark difference between a beta and a demo. And it's kind of interesting because nowadays, I mean, take a look, for example, like the Guild Wars 2 beta event weekends. One's happening this weekend. And by pre-purchasing the game, you get access to it. It almost seems more and more that betas are being used as a demo and I think people are kind of losing sight of what the purpose of a beta is and it's to test the game to make sure that once it's live a lot of the bugs and issues are hammered out. Uh, I'd like to just ask you guys, this actually wasn't a discussion that I, I meant to have but I think it's pretty interesting kind of the way the industry has been going and, and you know and it never used to really be this way. Jesse, how do you feel about people viewing betas as demos? I think it started with the idea of people seeing more and more of betas I, I guess as more companies because yeah we, we used to never testing. see betas so like, like now yeah. every time there's a beta there's tons of footage that was never the case right. in the past and I think it has to do with that like somewhere along the lines uh, companies decided that betas equal like free press and f you know people can see what's going on and then I think that stigmatized betas in sort of a way that is a lot of people see them as these people get to play it early. Why can't I play it early? When really a beta is like some of the junkiest versions of a game. Right? For those who 
played, uh, you know, like, like if you're playing the WoW beta right now, Mr. Pandaria, I was going to go back further, but you can do it right now. If you're playing the Mr. Pandaria beta, right, I'm sure a lot of people out there are like, man, I wish I could play. Trust me, you don't. 90% of the quests are, are like bugged to hell. Half the places you can't go to, there's also, you're testing the game, right? You're leaving feedback, you're testing the game. That's what a beta is for. And it's this idea that they get to enjoy it before I do that sort of pushes people to see a beta as it's a game that they're playing before I can play the game. And so companies then see all these people want to play it, and so then they say, oh, if you pre-order, you can get in the beta. When really, it's the game, like, like Guild Wars, for example, sure it's, in, sure it's like the beta weekend, but it's really not a beta. It's, it's a play it before you can buy it we already have this game being printed up to ship kind of thing. So there really isn't a beta. I mean, it's not technically a beta anymore. Yeah. But, it, it, you know, the idea of, oh, it's a beta, you can play it before it's, it's out. That's sort of the whole, I don't know, the, the feel of the whole situation. Yeah, and it's, it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting distinction because the companies themselves still call it a beta, whereas, as an example, like the Guild Wars 2 thing, it's... It, not really. It's. <laughs> I mean, sure, they're testing. Their, I'm sure in, they are still doing testing, and it's still serving at least somewhat the purpose of a beta. But one of the biggest things is it is marketing. It's like free marketing for the company. And they lift an NDA, so people are posting videos on YouTube and streaming and all sorts of things. And it's getting the word out uh, for their game and building hype behind it. Uh, but, but then you have the, the flip side, like this weekend, where Blizzard is using this specifically to stress test their servers, really. And when there's issues, people are like, well, what's going on? This game is crap. And it's kind of, you know, it's good, but at the same time, I think it can also hurt the company because it, some people will be left with a sour impression and maybe some of those people won't actually buy the game. And that would kind of suck for those people, but <laughs> I guess well, that's their choice. I just feel like Blizzard could have done a better job explaining that it, it was exactly that. It was a stress test. It wasn't really a polished, like, open beta and only having two days with it, I think people got a little frustrated, you know, which I generally what? don't side with people who get mad at, hey, I'm getting this thing for free, but I'm going to complain about it. But, uh, you know, they've been waiting a long time, and it's something that they hold dear to their hearts. So, you know, I think they could have just explained that it was a stress test on top of being open beta. But with all of that said, I think expectations were severely warped. Because I, I have friends who, who I work with who uh, I went over to their house and they were like, yeah, I got in the beta, it was awesome. They were so psyched and then they played it and it was like, okay, that was about an hour of gameplay. What do I do now? Yeah. Right? And so you can That's go back. With the right, beta right, right, right. And the thing is, is that, at that I, I find it just incredibly silly that people can complain so much about oh, I didn't get to play, I didn't get to play, when really, what was there to play, actually? Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing I was going to say, too. I know that there was only this weekend event for lots of people um, who haven't gotten into the beta otherwise. And, you know, I mean, we, we've been in the, you know, Jesse, you got in the fall, I'm pretty sure. And um, yeah. so we've had it for months and months and months now. And to be frank, one weekend is enough to see all of the content. And I, I think it's also important for people to realize that, you know, people were saying that it's a, um, it's not a beta and it's a demo because it ends at a certain point. No, it's not. That's not how it works. The reason it ends at a certain point is because they don't want to spoil the story. There's supposed to be some significant major s story spoilers immediately after the Skeleton King. And that's specifically why they stopped it where they did. And this has been explained to us in the past as well um, when we've asked, hey, if this is a true beta, why don't you let us test out the whole game? It's because the story is such a big part of the game, they don't, they don't want to spoil it. That's specifically why they stopped it where they did. But I think that that might also give people that impression too. Um, you know, people who aren't following the game very closely, they get into the open beta weekend and it stops at X point and they say, hey, thanks for trying the beta. It's like, oh, if this is a real beta, I'd be able to keep playing, right? So I guess this is a demo. Um, but I guess I could see where that confusion would come from, but I guess it, it, it's just important to know that that's not really how it works. They have different reasons for stopping it where they do, not because it's not a real beta. I don't know, but I mean, it's it's just it's just interesting either way, um, because there was a point in time where the only way you got into a beta is if you were like 
hired by the company to test the game, <laughs> like specifically right, like, at the devs' offices, you know? Yeah, I remember um, Burning Crusade beta. The Burning Crusade beta was like it, massively, I mean, it was an alpha. It was your friends and your, like, I have a friend who works for Blizzard. That's how I got into it. Other than that, the, like, it was no one there. And the Wrath of Lich King beta was kind of like that as well. And and it's and then of course they started to expand upon it on the end, but only it's only been like the last four years that betas have, have been sort of this testing ground for let's show people what we're doing and get information out there. Because usually beta was like a horrible secret. Like we don't want people to know what screwed up about this game. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, I think that companies just do need to be careful um, with how freely they're doing this because it can, it does leave a bad impression on some people who kind of don't understand the purpose of it. Uh, if things aren't 100% polished, then it, it can be, you know, I guess that's the danger to opening it up to the public and not having it exclusive, kind of invite only sort of thing. So, yeah. Release schedule. We have some information now, finally. Uh, there were some questions as to whether or not there's going to be one big global release. Is everyone getting the game at the same time? Uh, that is not the case. It is actually going to be a regional release. So depending on where you live, you're going to get it at separate times. Uh, the information that I have currently, and this was posted up on DiaboFans.com, is that Europe will be getting it uh, at 0001 CEST, and the U.S. will be getting the game at 12.01 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, there's also some more information for uh, New Zealand and Australian release dates, as, uh, release times as well. Uh, but the staggered release schedule, uh, you know, I think that it, I guess part of it is going to be that they want to try to not overload their so servers all at once. Although, I Am I correct in assuming that these the different regions are all on different servers? That seems like that would make sense, doesn't it? Uh, does uh, Australia have know. their own server? I don't even. I thought they were playing on uh, Americans. I really they, don't know. They don't have like an Oceania server. I uh, maybe you're right. I don't know. That's weird. But um, either way, there is a staggered release, and it's it's actually kind of humorous. I saw. Uh, I'm I'm sure you guys know who Athene is. Athene posted up a video saying how he's getting world first level 60, and that's great. I think Athene's awesome, but does it matter? Because he's going to get the game like oh. eight hours before s people. <laughs> yes. He, that does suck. That's, that's yeah. his thing. That's Athene's thing. Athene well, I mean, that, yeah, he likes to just rile people up. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I like the guy. I even did a, I, I did a video covering Diablo 3 with him uh, earlier in the beta, but um, I was just thinking about that the other day, and I'm like, that doesn't really make any sense because, sure, he's going to get world first, but he's getting the game like eight hours before U.S. <laughs> so it's not yeah, really much of a competition. You know, again, again, that's his sort of like claim to fame that like he's the guy who does that. Yeah, he's like, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I guess it's it's sort of a, a thing he does, <laughs> but you know, it's a thing. That's he's kind of <laughs> you know, he's kind of like. Blizzard's own personal troll. That's, that's, right. that's just his job. And then <laughs> it's all in good fun, though. I think that's an important thing for people to realize. People love to rage on him, but I'm like, you have to realize that he's like he's portraying a character. Like he he has built this character a theme, and he's got a certain persona and a certain attitude and yeah. a certain swagger. And that's not the man himself, the guy who plays a theme. Uh, it's, I mean, uh, yes, I don't want to ruin the internet for you, but YouTube <laughs> is kind of like TV. Right. Ninety percent of what you see is people pretending to be someone else. And spoiler alert, especially during vlogs. Oh yeah. I don't want to ruin it for you, <laughs> but the people doing vlogs, I'm gonna say, are ingenuous. You destroyed just the internet. Know. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> the internet will collapse in on itself now. <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh, yeah. It's funny. I think too, if you were serious about getting world first, you could get a hold of a EU copy if you're living in NA. Yeah, I guess like, that's it's not that big of a deal. Really, it's right. something people really cared about, but I think I think it's one of those it's one of those benchmarks that is like, wow, that's really cool for about a week, and then people yeah. just don't care anymore. So you know, you know, God bless him. Hope he has a good time <laughs> doing it. It'll be funny to it'll be funny to see how he pulls it off. Yeah, because I know during his WoW video, it, he got like. 50 people to power level him, which was amazing. Right, yeah, like, and that's, that's that, I yeah. think that's the biggest thing, because you try to do these things, and you can't really do it in, like, you know, 
you play for 24 straight hours and you're still nowhere near the cap, you need someone to take the rain. You're going to start playing sloppy. It's going to start being slower. That's kind of how it works. I mean, that's how people got, um, you know, that's how people got rank one in when the PVP system in WoW first came out, you know. Was it uh, Grandmaster? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's just how people did it. There was like multiple people playing the same account, and that's kind of how it has to be done realistically. I know people out there are like, oh, no, I'm just going to be the one person. It's like, you're not going to win. <laughs> Typically, it's all about finding an exploit and then using that to your advantage. It's never like an honest competition. So I don't, I don't really see the point in them. Yeah, that's, I mean, that is true too. Because I, I even think that's something that Athene specifically struggled with during some of his world first level caps in WoW because they were using things like mob tagging and things like that. And I'm sure they're going to try to do something along those same lines. I was actually but talking you, you with him. What? You, you, you can't blame him for doing something that no, wasn't no, taken no. out of the game. Oh, it's, like, a, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, like an, it, it's, a, it's meant to draw attention. It's all about the extravagance yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Absolutely. And um, I, I actually was talking to him about this in the video that we did uh, a little while back. And we were talking about, you know, how is that going to work in Diablo 3? And the thing that I kind of concluded was that I think it's going to be a lot about having other people farm plus XP gear for you. And you can just take this, like, community pool of plus experience gear and always be dumping it onto this one character that everyone's trying to level up. Um, I think that that's going to probably be a big part of it, too, because plus XP gear is pretty huge in Diablo. That's like a big... Yeah, and mm-hmm. if, he, if he runs with the group, they can have all the damage gear, and he can just keep stacking on the plus XP yeah. and not worry about doing anything really important and just level really high. Yeah. I mean, it's a at good some strategy. Point, at some point, they're going to fall behind in levels, though, and be like, like maybe. I don't know exactly how that scaling is going to work, but it might work against you at some point, unless you just start going solo afterwards. Either way, it'll be cool. It'll be fun to watch. It'll be an experience. I won't be watching because I'll be playing. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Diablo 3 midnight launch events will be taking place. I mean, this was pretty much expected, wasn't it? Uh, Different retailers in your areas. There's an official post on Diablo3.com. You can go there and uh, look for places in your vicinity that are going to be hosting these midnight launch events. I'm sure there's going to be exciting things going on. I don't know, really know what. The official post, though, is on Diablo3.com. I'm not going. I'm going to be home downloading the game and playing it as soon as servers go live. That's my plan. Are either of you planning to go to a midnight release? No, no. Just there's, <laughs> one in, there's one in Irvine that's like an hour away that is uh, where the, all the Blizzard guys are going to be. And as much as I would love to go drive an hour to get a copy of a game I already have a copy of... <laughs> I think I'll stay at home and play instead. Yeah, like, I love you, Blizz. I love the people who work for you, <laughs> but I like your games a bit more. It's too bad because this used to be like a big thing for me too. I remember, uh, what was it, when Halo 2 came out? I remember going to a midnight launch for it and picking it up with all my friends from college and then you know, going back to the dorm and playing it all night and skipping our classes the next day. <laughs> and, like, I, I do not – I mean, I guess it's also because I'm older and I don't live with college friends anymore, but uh, I just have no in, no desire to go to the store at midnight. I guess, if, I guess, though, in that period of your life, like, if you're in college and if you're living with friends or what, whatever, um, even if you're not in college, if, if you're just living with some buddies, I guess that that kind of gives – credence to going to something like that because you can make it this event and everything but i think for like someone like me if you're older or living by yourself or with a significant other it's like why do i want to go to the store at midnight <laughs> like what why would i possibly want to do that so just not for me anymore i think i've grown out of it sorry to say it's not uh, it's because it's because they made it easier Let's be honest. Oh, well, yeah. That, what you're saying oh, is you're sure, lazy. Yeah. Well, I that's agree. definitely part of I it, I agree. Too. Don't worry. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> gotta drive and get dressed. Ugh. No, thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's definitely part of it, too. I mean, it's easier. We, all, we take the path of least resistance, don't we? That's kind of how it works. So uh, why not stay at home and just download it? Bunch of giveaways going on for the Sword of Justice comic book series, uh, fan site giveaways, such as from Diablo fans, Bliss Planet, D3DB, D3 Sank, and Diablo Expressions. I have comics too <laughs> to give away. Uh, I didn't 
end up posting up my contest in time, so I didn't make it onto this list here. Hilariously enough, I should be. I, I had a bunch of stuff going on. I was like, all right, I, I'm gonna do this contest. I was supposed to do it the like I was supposed to do it on Tuesday, and then I was gonna do it on Wednesday, and then Thursday came along, and I got an email saying, you guys done your contest yet? And I was like, all right, I'll do it today, and it just didn't happen. So uh, <laughs> a bunch of the sites have these contests going on currently. I also have the same set of comic books to be giving away. Uh, I guess I'll do it next week or something. <laughs> Whenever I find the time, I don't know. I'm lazy sometimes, I swear. I swear to you. All right, now we're going to go into a little bit of discussion here. Uh, Jesse's going to be with us for a little while longer. You're going to have to jet sometime soon, though, right, Jesse? Yeah. It's okay. We still love you. Uh, there was uh, some Jay Wilson Q&A that took place uh, from his visit to Korea. Nothing really new and groundbreaking out of it. Uh, basically just rehashing some of the same questions that have been asked, re-answering re some of the same questions that have been asked over the past few months, over the past couple of years. Uh, but if you do want to take a look at that, there's a list of the Q&A that took place over on DiabloFans.com uh, just to get a little bit of information there. I also wanted to mention that elective mode visibility was brought up. People talking about how the current system is a little restricting and they wanted kind of an easier way for people to see elective mode because I actually know a lot of people, I've spoken with a lot of people, are getting questions from a lot of people asking if we can switch spells and abilities from what the predetermined, like the primary attack and the secondary attack and then all of the class specific attacks. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, hey, is there any way we can mix and match here? Uh, a lot of people just don't know about elective mode, so apparently a lot of people are having a hard time finding it or just don't even know to look for it. I think that that's probably the biggest thing. I'm assuming what the best thing for them to do would be to like, when you have your skill panel brought up if there was just like a checkbox that said elective mode right there yeah rather than having to go into game options and stuff like that Does, i agree because it is there, hidden isn't there a tooltip wasn't there a tooltip that said like you know you can do it this way but if you go in the game options there's elective mode i think there's um i'm the not sure about a tooltip because i usually shut those off like right away there might be something when you oh, that's, yeah all right that's probably it so if, you, if you're going hardcore <laughs> Like you, if, if when you go in immediately and you're like, oh, I don't want to find out how to play the game, you turn it <laughs> off. Then you're on your own. Then you can't you know complain you, about you, not knowing how to play. Yeah, the you game. know what you're doing, big man. You know what's going on. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, Jaded, what were you gonna say about elective mode? Oh well, I just think like exactly, exactly what you just said is like a very hidden option, and it's not very apparent to people who just start playing. So I think your checkbox idea is actually, it's not the most elegant, but it's probably better than what they currently have. Yeah, I mean, so, some sort of way to see it right up in your face when you're looking at your skills, you know. So, I don't, I don't, I don't think that they should have it restricted to begin with. I see really no reason behind it. Um, yeah. They, like I, I understand it if they want to have these set categories to give people who are new to the genre or new to the game kind of a basic introduction to it. But there's no reason to make it so that they can't just pick what they want like have your categories have them set up the same way it is i mean heck when you go into elective mode nothing changes other than you can tab through uh the exactly. different exactly you know what i mean there's like there's no significant difference in the the layout or anything except you've got arrows on the left and right side to switch through the different categories why are they not just not there by default and like nothing would change it'd be the exact same all the categories would still be lined in place you could just move through it if you wanted to i don't i don't understand I think it's just kind of silly that it is the way it is to begin with, so that's just my opinion. WASD movement, we've had a lot of people ask about this and why is it not in the game. We'd really like to have it, um, you know, using those keybinds to move around and having strafing rather than just having to click everywhere that you move. Uh, it was responded by Bashock when asked why they don't put it in the game. Allowing WASD would provide an unfair advantage over click to move in some situations. We could of course make WASD the default control scheme, but we feel click to move is integral to the Diablo legacy and gameplay. We have no plans to add WASD or allow it. Uh, so he's saying that if we had that in the game, it would be superior to click to move, and we don't want to do that because then people would not want to click to move. Everyone would want to use that, and because they they you know the click to move thing is a part of Diablo in their eyes. It's part of the gameplay, part of the experience. Um, they they don't plan to change that. So that's I mean I guess that's 
it's not no it's not really the same i was going to say why don't they okay well maybe this like i guess it'd kind of be like people asking why don't you use like click to move in a first person shooter that's a really stupid example but you know they're just saying like this this control scheme the the click to move control scheme is specifically meant for Diablo. It's how the game is played. Uh, WASD it just doesn't fit in within that. So, um. well, it's it's a it's a dungeon crawler. I mean, that's the. It's weird that people forget that's the foundations of this genre of gameplay. Like click to move is how it's always worked. You click your character, he moves someplace. Like that's sort of the way. You know, them changing it would be a fundamental change in everything that's gone on with the franchise and any other ones that are similar to it. Yeah. I think the, the thing that I, ha I was thinking about while you were talking was, what does that say for the idea that this is going to be a future console game? Because there's no way you can do a click to move on a console. And if they say that, that you know, having you know, WASD is, is an advantage, then having controllers is a super advantage. Mm. So maybe maybe there is no console coming, which is all sorts of weird. Or maybe it is, and it's going to be on different servers. I have no clue. Well, well, no, because WASD is basically eight directions that you can move. But with a joystick, with an analog stick, it's still the same. As, you're still getting the same amount of control that you would with a mouse. The, the downside, I guess, is just like on a keyboard, you know, there's only eight ways to move. Yeah. But it is an advantage in PvP to have a separate control scheme as your mouse. Like, that's well, also probably why they don't want to put in both options. I, th I think, I think especially during PvP, it has to do with quick turns and movements and things like that. Because if you click a mouse and all of a sudden you click back, there's, there's a, a time delay there. If you press forward and then you go diagonal and then back, your character doing WASD is going to move twice as fast. Yeah, and, and it's the idea of being able to maneuver your character and then target your abilities at the same time, whereas you can't do... If you move, exactly. if you move your character with a mouse, you can't at the same time be targeting someone. You have to scroll over to them after you've designated your location. Uh, and people were also complaining, and part of the reason people were asking for this is because they were running into the issue of you know trying to move somewhere but accidentally clicking on an enemy which targeted them and and activated an attack on your left mouse button uh and i guess people just didn't realize that there's a force move bind in the game you can bind the ability to move to a key and what will happen is that whenever whatever you do like i do middle mouse button so whenever i hit middle mouse button my character moves to that spot and they won't be attacking anything so there's a specific move key that can be bound. It is not bound by default, but if you go into key bindings, you can bind it. And by using that to move around rather than using the left mouse button to move around, it'll prevent you from accidentally t attacking someone when you're meaning to move in their vicinity. Um, so I guess that that alleviates that concern and makes it a little less necessary to have WISD. But uh, yeah, it's like Jesse said, this is a dungeon crawler. This is kind of how the game is designed. It's meant to be used with that movement function and that those movement controls that's just kind yeah. of how it is diablo 3 graphics people still complaining about this can you believe it <laughs> they're saying why does diablo 3 not look like crisis <laughs> well uh, that's not really what blizzard's going for is their response uh, bashok stated when asked about the graphics in the game and why they seem to be dated he says that we're not particularly interested in pushing graphical limits with Blizzard games. Our intent is always to provide a timeless, stylized aesthetic while allowing for a broad range of machines to view the game with similar results. The art style for Diablo 3 is specifically intended to appear as a moving painting, which in general avoids very crisp textures or hard lines. Too long didn't read. We want to sell crap load copies of our games. We want everyone in the world playing them. So we're not going to push limits. We're not going to require high-end machines to play. Um, that way we can get more sales and be further reaching. <laughs> so I want to point out that, that I think a big problem that they have now from this is their... Uh, I don't know if it's a backlash or if this is just an excuse people are using, but it's kind of an assholey excuse, is, is basically w since while... If you pay for a year of WoW, you get Diablo for free, right? A lot of WoW players or people who, who took that deal are saying that the reason why the game is so junky is why, like, like that's, that's their description. Don't, like, jump on me for saying that. But the reason why the game is so, so junky and the graphics are so bad is that 
uh, because they're giving it away for free, and that's why they gave it away for free because they knew no one. <laughs> they knew no one would buy it because it's crap. It's really like, funny. I've seen posts like that, and it's like you are an idiot. That's ridiculous. Like, you're an idiot. <laughs> well, there'd be an argument there to say someone who buys the game via that via that way should be able to play it as well. Like they have the same system requirements. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to be the case, but I guess I could see an argument there. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that was that was like the big complaint. Like, well, like we should have expected this because we knew that the game was gonna be bad based on the fact they gave it away for free. That's I, stupid. I, I, no, <laughs> so that's not why they gave it away for free. <laughs> they did this to he, push WoW it's subscriptions. Funny, people are reading into it so much, like it's some big super super secret. Yeah, I mean, no, it's no, it's pretty obvious. They, they they've been doing this for a while. They're making their games. It's I mean. Bashrock is stating it clearly right here as for people who didn't already know it. They they want their games to be played on a wide array of machines. They want them to be able to be played for a very long time. You look at hyper-realistic games, people don't play them for very long. Anyone still playing the original Crisis? I don't know anybody. <laughs> like, they're just not, you know, you look at games that go for super crazy realism and they focus more on the graphics than they do on the gameplay, and they're typically right. not played... They don't have a very, very long shelf life, whereas, you know, plenty of people are still playing the initial StarCraft and WarCraft 3, and obviously World of WarCraft's been going on for quite a while now and still has a, around 10 million subscribers. Like, it's... They, they don't care to go for high-end graphics. They never have, and newsflash, they never will. Blizzard isn't going to be pushing out the next Crisis-style game. Uh, it's not not their forte. They're not interested in it. By the way, Jesse, as soon as you have to jet, just please let me know. It's now the time. Are you parting ways? Uh, we, I, I can stay for one more discussion. Okay, cool. one more discussion. <laughs> one more. Be it better be good. <laughs> um, I was going to bring up next the discussion of difficulty in the game, uh, the guided experience and everything like that. People were saying, hey, you know, from testing out the beta, I'm really concerned that the game's just too easy, it's too guided. Uh, and again, we do have another Bashhawk response to play off of here. Bashhawk stated, I think it's a symptom of the beta where you're in a part of the game where we're deliberately guiding players by handing out their skills, a rune, and everything like that. It's crafted to be a linear experience from the start. It's meant to be kind of this is your introduction to the game uh, because the first couple of hours are the most crucial to a successful and long-term experience. We're not in the mindset to drop all of the game systems on you and say, good luck, sucker. Uh, so Bashhawk's just stating, you know, People who tried the open beta weekend, if you felt like it was guided and easy, that's how it's designed. And the game is meant to open up and become more complex as you move on. And especially once you hit the harder difficulties, he specifically cites that uh, people going through normal and once they hit nightmare, uh, once they work their way up to nightmare, things are going to start getting really hard for them. Uh, and that's, that is how it's specifically designed. The game's not meant to be hard out the gate. And, you know, everyone's always saying th this is just... Blizzard <clears throat> catering to casual players and they're trying to make it so that anyone can play, your grandma can play, and the response is that's true. They've, they've actually said they want your grandma to be able to play Diablo 3 uh, or at least have the hang of it from the start, not necessarily work her way uh, through Inferno. So Jesse, before you part ways, Blizzard and making their games accessible to a wide array of people is this something you're all right with? Uh, does it bother you much at all, or do you think people just need to take a chill pill? Every uh, there's I don't know what it is about about gamers in general, but for the most part, there's always a subset that are just constantly elitist about their gaming, like like oh, uh, other people playing with us. I I don't know why, and it, it's seriously it's like a mirror image, and I know. I know somewhere there's a nerd who's about to relate to me. I'm channeling him right now. <laughs> it's like in high school and the different cliques in high school. And everyone has to be like one of the popular group, right? And then when you get into gaming, people form cliques in gaming. And they're like, I'm into cool kids and we're hardcore. And all these losers who are casuals, what nerds? I bet they go and see sunlight, losers, right? I mean, it's, it, it's, such, it's such an egotistical thing to say that... Blizzard is dumbing down the game for other people. Uh, not everything's about you, bro. Not <laughs> everything is about you. Well, that's a, I mean, I would say that that's a young mindset in general, because I have to be honest, I have had that mindset about games that I've been a part of before. 
Like, I have felt that way <laughs> about games and about other people in the community who weren't, like, sharing my gaming values, I'll call them. Um, and that was when I was younger. And, I, I mean, I think it's safe to say that that is just, you know, the, the, the young, it's like teen angst all, <laughs> all over again. Like, the young, arrogant gamer who hates everyone else who doesn't game the way he does. Um, and I was there. I was that guy. <laughs> Sorry to say. I'm glad that I, and I, I have to say I think I think if I if I was better I would probably have been that guy too <laughs> because I, I never I never like when it comes to most games I put in the time it is to see the story to play the game but I never invest enough time where it's like I have to be the best at this because I don't know what warped me in my childhood but I'm one of those people that has the sense of it's just a game in an imaginary world that doesn't exist that's weird that you think that way <laughs> when I beat, it. yeah. When I when I when I beat it, it's not like I need to achieve all the achievements for it because it doesn't matter. Like there's nowhere, there isn't like the great scorekeeper somewhere. Like, hmm, Jesse only got fourteen percent of those achievements. His life is meaningless, <laughs> right? Like, I'm. I, that's you won't make it to the pearly gates, Jesse. Sorry to say. I know, right? <laughs> I. It's, it's Diablo for me, permanent Diablo, right? I I I don't quite understand but i mean i get it because it's sort of like you're achieving stuff and it's like awesome yeah and, and and the harder it is the more accomplished you feel i get that but at the same time i sort of just passed it where i'm like i don't i don't even care anymore if i beat it and i have fun playing it then i've achieved what i wanted to achieve i think for me it was it was kind of social pressure because my friends all play the game and i was always like okay well i need to be the best <laughs> so so this is why this becomes like this this game and this part of my life becomes so important that anyone who doesn't feel that way about it is a noob, you know. I'm I'm actually going to address your fans right now. I think a work of fan art needs to have Dennis with like Ash Ketchum from Pokemon <laughs> shouting, "I've got to be the very best!" Catching up with <laughs> Diablo in a Pokeball. Go get on it, artiste. Get on it. That's that's his new channel page <laughs> yeah. picture. I want to be the best. Just imagine him, <laughs> his little hat backwards, and he's catching. Little, uh, and there's, a, there's a little Diablo who's like, no! And he's being sucked up into a ball. Get on it. That's hilarious. And with that, Jesse, I'll let you go <laughs> about your day. He's kicking me off. Once <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I know you got to go. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to feel like you have to stay here longer. Adios, Jaded gents. and I are going to keep fun. talking. Take it Bye. easy. We'll see Jesse next week probably, right? We'll see ya. Yep. All right. Adios. Have a good day. All right, so Jade, let me ask you then. Um, what, what, how do you feel about this whole thing, and how do you feel about the idea that they're making the game more casual friendly? I mean, I think there's really no argument behind that. I think it's safe to say that, at the very least, the early stage of the game is is meant to be nice and guided for the casuals. Are, are you in the elitist mindset at all, even in a little, in the slightest bit, or are you okay with this? Uh, you know, I was kind of like you when I was younger, where I would compete with people in my school and like friends I actually you know talked with on a daily basis but um, you know I have to be really passionate about a game to like really sink my teeth into it to want to be the best Diablo is definitely one of those games you know like it's not every game that that happens and I think people are gonna get slapped in the face with the difficulty like it's gonna hit a point where this is not easy mode, and it's going to be pretty early on, I believe. Like that's that's just my guess. Yeah, ba Bashak had said that he thinks a lot of people, um, general people in the community, commenting on the forums, are going to start to struggle at the end of normal, even within yeah, the yeah. first w within the first of four difficulties. At the end of that, people are going to start to struggle with three difficulties to go. That's that says a lot uh, about how things could potentially be. So I think you're definitely right in that. I imagine, like, one of the bosses you're going to get stuck on in normal even, like, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ramp up pretty fast. Yeah. Um, and on that, too, I do want to mention, we, we talked about earlier how from the press event that Jay Wilson went to in Korea, uh, there, were, there was a whole bunch of discussion that went on, and there were specifically questions about the difficulty in the game and how it's being tested internally. 
Uh, and the specific quote from Jay Wilson was that when we're testing the highest difficulty level, we don't force testers to level up from scratch each time. Uh, their characters receive randomized equipment, uh, and then they go at a boss, and they basically run through the boss. And this is how they're testing internally. They're testing the bosses. And if after 20 attempts of internal testers not defeating the boss, then they have to make an adjustment. Now, from there, he said that the difficulty is currently set based off of how the most skilled staff members feel is adequate. So their internal testing team, they, they base the difficulty on how their most skilled players feel is good. And then at launch, they're going to double this. They say they're going to multiply that difficulty by two at launch. That is craziness. Um, yeah, yeah that's you know, insane. They're taking their most skilled testers. They're having them play through the game. They're trying to figure out difficulty levels, how scaling needs to be done. And then they're going to say, all right, we're going to double this when the game launches, and we'll just see how it goes when it's live. I, first of all, I can't even believe that they're, they're doing this, but that's straight from the horse's mouth. That's what Jay Wilson said. So, I, I really like that mentality um, because nobody has to be in front out really fast. It could be there for months and months and months, and nobody can beat you know, all of it. Like, I, I really like that. Yeah, I, th I think it's really, really exciting uh, that they're looking to make the game that difficult. And I think that people who are concerned about the difficulty uh, being too easy in the early stage have to realize that they've seen such a small portion of the game is not at all representative of how things are going to be later on. Uh, and they just need to calm down, you know? If I could tell my prior self anything, <laughs> my, my <laughs> young self, I would say, you just need to take it easy. Uh, <laughs> but again, I, I will go back and, and, and I will freely admit that, you know, when I'm playing this game, when I'm playing a single game and all my friends are playing it and we're all into the competitive part of the game, I, I can definitely understand where people are coming from when they have that kind of elitist mentality. But it's, you know, it's not really mm -hmm. the coolest thing to be, you know, in real life or in the virtual world. <laughs> Just need to take it easy. Be nice to people. Make a friend or two. Won't kill you. Non-competitive PvP, we have been reminded yet again that it is not going to be competitive in Diablo. <clears throat> Every time I hear it, my soul dies just a little bit more. Zarham talking about PvP on the official forums, said the following when asked about if it's going to be balanced, how competitive will it be. He said, we want PvP to be incredibly challenging and fun, but we want to avoid turning it, in, it, turning it into a truly competitive league ladder esport. Uh, we just don't think Diablo gameplay is very conducive for that type of controlled environment where balance is paramount. That said, we want to develop PvP at, um, as an engaging and rewarding system. What we don't want to do is take a traditional esports approach to PvP where balance will become so important to a competitive ranking system that solo and cooperative gameplay feel a bit neutered as a result. We want your characters to feel totally imba. Uh, then we want you to enter some arenas, send the scorched remains of other players' corpses flying, and let the satisfaction wash all over you until your opponents take similar care to, um, of your hero. So, you know, um, immediately when I hear that, you know what I think of? I immediately think of back when WoW first came out, two-shotting people because you completely outgear them. <laughs> that is the that's it's a, gonna happen oh yeah I mean, and th that's yeah. what they want to happen he, it's say he's saying it right here in the last couple of sentences we want you to obliterate your opponent in a couple of seconds and then have them respawn and do the same thing to you yeah i mean it is it is what it is they've taken diablo and and pushed the non-competitive side of it and uh you know neither like you and me we wouldn't agree with that necessarily but it's for the better of the game, I feel, in a lot of ways. So I'm not, I'm not really against it, like, hardcore. Yeah. I, I, I guess the thing is, too, as much as, again, like you say, you and me, this is definitely a game that I would love to have a competitive side to it. Because I know it's a game I'm going to be playing a lot, and I would love for the game that I'm devoting so much time to to have that aspect in it. But it's not going to. And I also think that a lot of the Diablo fan base doesn't, not everyone, but a lot of the Diablo fan base doesn't really care for that because Diablo has been more about the grind and the PVM and just going through and, and doing run after run looking for gear. Um, that's what it's been more about. There was certainly a, a big PvP scene in Diablo 2, and a lot of people say that that's the whole reason people kept playing it was to get gear to PvP. 
But at the end of the day, it's a PvE or PvM game. It's focused on you and your friends going through and slaying demons and getting gear. Um, and they don't, Blizzard as a company doesn't care to make this competitive. They said it time and time again. They're going to continue to say it, and I'm sure we'll be continuing to announce when they do <laughs> and voice our disappointment with that fact. <laughs> um, but it's well, how it is. <clears throat> I think, too, at a certain, there, there has to be some type of hidden matchmaking, right? There can't just be throwing everybody against everybody. I'm there is. Sure. There, there's like an internal matchmaking that's going to be... Yeah. So the game will get to a certain point where fully geared people are fighting other fully geared people, and there'll be some competition there to be had. Like, I wouldn't totally it'll put it off that you won't have a lot of fun with the PvP system. Yeah, and I it's mean, also under a lot of like work right now so right. anything could come out well the, it's it's been said uh they've said it publicly and actually i i visited uh the blizzard offices a few months back for, it had to do with fan it wasn't diablo 3 specifically related it had to do with the fan site stuff going on um and now that they've said it publicly publicly I, I guess i can mention it i asked hey is this pvp delay have anything to do with you guys changing the pvp system at all um and that's a no uh during the during the press event that jay wilson went to in korea when asked about that he said that the pvp pvp system is pretty much going to stay how we saw at blizzcon the 4v4 uh, kind of team deathmatch respawn style that isn't fundamentally changing. I think they okay. just they said that they just feel like making a few tweaks to it. So um, unfortunately, it, it isn't going to be that they're they, they've got any major changes in the works. But I mean, you know, to, and to be honest with you, uh, I had a lot of fun two shotting people. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I actually enjoy that to an extent. Uh, it's not going to be true balance, and you know, it, they're just not they're not looking for it. So. You know, beating that dead horse again. Um, yeah, yeah. They're not. They're not interested in it. But you're. You're right. It's still going to be fun. I don't think people um, should discount the arena PvP as being enjoyable because I think it certainly is going to be. It'll be just as enjoyable as D2 PvP. Uh, they weren't majorly focused on balancing that. You know. There were definitely exactly. certain builds and certain characters that were much stronger than others, and, <laughs> and yeah, you, yeah. you dealt with a lot of uh, pretty much instant gibs in that game as well. So I don't, I don't know. Well, it's just you know, that's it. We we can hang our we can hang our hat up on that issue, and Done. unless unless a major change takes place, um, it's just kind of how it's going to be. So I wish though. It looks like we'll be playing what Bloodline Champions. That's our closest. <laughs> Our yeah, it's is pretty similar. <laughs> if, if you're into that, and I, I, I guess I could, I could use that as a plug. If you guys are interested in like kind of this style of uh, point and click gameplay, and you want com competition, Bloodline Champions is a good game. I played a bit of the beta a while back, and I actually kind of enjoyed it. And they're still going strong with that. Have you had any chance to try that game out, even a little bit? I tried it very early in the beta, and there wasn't a lot of people playing it, so there was really long matchmaking and that it wasn't kind, the most enjoyable it you, huh? experience <laughs> it wasn't the most enjoyable experience because there wasn't a lot of people but i'm sure if i went back and tried it like i'd have a lot more fun with it because it was a very solid like well-made game you know what i'm interested in i'm interested to see how far they're going to take balancing for blizzard dota obviously uh, you know people know these moba style games there's a lot of constant balance tweaks that take place i wonder if that's going to be something that they're interested in I mean, because there, there's competitive, you know, there's comp competitive League of Legends, and uh, Dota 2 is most certainly going to be competitive. I'm sure they're gunning Absolutely. for a spot in uh, MLG, you know. Um, I wonder if Blizzard Dota is going to try to also take those reins. And I guess that's the other thing, too. You have to, you know, we focus on Diablo and, and kind of what we want from this game. But if you look at Blizzard from a whole, their esports is so, they've got StarCraft 2. I mean, that is esports. That's, that's what most people associate with esports besides, like, the FPS scene. Uh, StarCraft 2 is so huge. And then, like, League of Legends is all, all, very big, if not bigger, actually. Uh, I think the viewership on League of Legends at times surpasses that of uh, StarCraft. Um, but as a company, Blizzard doesn't need like four four franchises for esports. You know, I, I don't. Yeah, think, I don't. I, I don't, I don't think, think, they think their Dota. Anymore. I don't think their Dota will be aimed towards competitive. Just by the nature of how it's part of StarCraft II, it's not really its own thing. Yeah. You know. So, and, and the original Dota too was well, it was competitive. 
I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even going to get into that scene because I don't know anything <laughs> about it. I'm going to step all over myself. So. But, but I mean, you can say enough that they had tournaments where people won money. Like that, that that pushes a game into the realm of esports. If there are tournaments for money, people are, can play professionally to the sense that they can make a living off of a game, and not everyone can do that. But if that like that that is what I deem something as com- as like a competitive professional esport, you know, um, if yeah, you can make a sure. living off of playing a video game. That's that, and I don't think that Blizzard cares to have that for Diablo. I mean, they have it for StarCraft. They kind of had it for WarCraft. I feel like that's I, I don't hear much about WoW Arena anymore. I think people I don't, I can't talk much on it. Like I used to be a big like I used to, I was Gladiator, and uh, not like multiple seasons, but I, I've been Gladiator. I've, I've played high ranking um, Arena, but I don't know about it at all anymore. And um, I certainly don't know about the competitive esports side, but yeah, that's that's how it is. But anyways, if you want to talk <coughs> about unbalanced? What World of Warcraft? Oh World right, Warcraft. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is just horrible. That well, and that's horrible. the problem because these RPGs, there's gear involved and there's different specs involved, and it becomes it becomes all about there being too many variables for them to account for, especially when you've got teams of three, four, five. You know, it's it's just kind of tough. Yeah. It is tough. It is tough. And we will be wrapping things up with some community questions, as we always do. Uh, if you have a question that you would like answered on DiabloCast, I post for questions about an hour before the cast goes live over cast goes live over on our Facebook page. And uh, you can just post under that if you have a question that you would like answered. Let's see. Question here. Is there any plans for a guild system at all? Most of the people I talk about Diablo 3 are very disappointed that there won't be any play in a guild with their friends. Uh, no guild system in Diablo because I, I really think they just don't find it necessary. What, what, what real purpose would a guild serve over a friends list except for a chat channel? Like an extra chat exactly, channel. Exactly that. A chat channel. Like... It would be nice just to have something small where you could talk to people you know. Like, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate like other guild systems. And they could build on it later, of course. But right, uh, right off the bat, I think they could do something small like a chat system. I, my hope is and my, my thought is that they're going to addition, initially, at some point, implement this just into Battle.net itself. And so you can have... Battle yeah. net, you can have Battle.net clans across StarCraft and Diablo and Warcraft. And I think that that would be a great idea if that's something that they added. And especially with the cross-game chat that they have in Battle.net 2.0. I mean, because right now, it, you can't do it in Diablo at the moment. I don't know if it's going to be the case at release. But you can't make a custom chat channel in Diablo right now. There's all preset ones. But in StarCraft, you can just go into chat channel and you can click in the name of, you can type in the name of a channel and join it. And that that could supplement a like a guild chat channel, you know, if they sure, had that sure. in Diablo three. I just want to point out too that Battlenet two point is kind of disappointing on that end, like in terms of StarCraft specifically. I don't know about you, but it just seems really weak. Like they're not pushing those features as much as other games. Also, uh, I think that they're definitely underused. <laughs> yeah, is that is that bar- where your complaint barren. is coming from for that? Yeah, like it doesn't automatically put you in chat. Um, I don't. I don't know specifically StarCraft. If if you go to a chat, will it put you in there when you log in? Uh, it it actually does if you join a specific chat channel. Like I okay. I have a FSG chat channel for like the Force community or whatever people on my website basically, and I, I have that set. And every time I log into StarCraft, it auto joins that. Okay, then that's really all you need for Diablo. Right. You know I, mean? if they, I think if they just did that for Diablo, that would be a good supplement because, you know, it's not a game where you need to mass up 12 different people to do a run. Like, at most, you're going to have three other people in your game at any given time. Uh, most people satisfy that with just a friends list. So, uh, I don't know. It's We'll see if they decide to do it. I'm not... Like, I, basically, my, my stance on this is, although I don't feel it's super necessary, I think a lot of people would like it. And if yeah. they added it, I think it would be great. But right now, I don't think that they feel it's something that's crucial to launch the game with, you know. I think that they're they're fine without it. I don't, I don't think they're too concerned at all. So I'm pretty sure that that's kind of where they're sitting right now. Hopefully we see something in the future, though. If nothing, like unified unified tags and stuff like that. I know especially for StarCraft, that's a big thing that a lot of people want because they have their clan tags. 
So it'd be nice if you could just have a clan or, or guild or whatever you want to call in. And that's how it's associated with, you know, with your character and other people that belong to that. A sense of identity in the virtual space is what people look for. So there's some people m more and more questions as well about the, uh, the guild. Lots of people wanting to know about guilds and clans. A uh, question here about the Real Money Auction House. I thought I saw that one could buy slash sell gold, but I cannot remember. Is it so? And if it is, the gold age will be ruined, and this deeply concerns me. Uh, if not, then I'm happy. Well, uh, it, you can buy and sell gold, yeah. What, do you think that that's going to ruin the gold auction house, Jaded? Um, I think it's just sort of... Because it's all interchangeable. You know? Yeah, I think it's just sort of essential. Like, it's going to happen one way or the other. You're going to get that gold for money, so... Why not have it just like right there? Uh, I could see why somebody sees gold on the auction house and thinks, well, you're just straight up buying gold now. Like, And they even at some point had straight up buying characters, but they removed that. I don't know if they're going to put that in later. Yeah, that'll be actually interested if they do bring that back because that you could definitely buy characters. <laughs> yeah, that was that was definitely uh, one of the initial features for it. Uh, so we'll be see if, we'll see if they decide to bring that back or not. That'd be pretty interesting. Um, I don't know. It's that's kind of weird to me, the whole buying character thing. I it is. It is. It's never been seen in any game, like other than behind the scenes. Of course, people right. do it all the time. Yeah. Right. So it's nothing new, but yeah. And then lastly, this is kind of a fun question to go out on. Uh, my question is more speculation. What do you think happens just after we kill a Skeleton King? Uh, the end of the beta, where they did because of a plot re uh, revelation. What do you think that revelation is? Any, you want to take a jab at this, Jaded? What do you think happens after the Skeleton King? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, You're not going to try? I have no idea. Speculation. All right, here's my, here's my idea. I'm pretty sure that it, the the falling star was imperious falling from the heavens smashing into deckard kane for some reason because deckard kane is associated or maybe he was trying to get leah because leah is possessed this is all speculation none of this could is guaranteed to be true or i don't really have any kind of good backing behind these claims uh but i think it was imperious trying to either take out deckard or leah and obviously he didn't accomplish that, at least in his initial landing. So I think after we kill the Skeleton King, you know, the the Falling Star went right through the cathedral, and we see the giant gaping hole as we go through the different cathedral levels. I think at the bottom of that, we're going to find him. Um, that'd be awesome. <laughs> That's what I want it to be, at least. I think that'd be really cool. That'd be a terrible way to try to kill somebody who can just, like... <laughs> like, Decker King could just, like pop open a teleport and he's like peace you know what i mean like <laughs> well i guess whatever whatever the goal was it didn't work i have to assume someone was trying to take out one of them you know that would just be a very odd coincidence if both deckard and leah were just chilling out there and oh yeah a comet flew into the cathedral right where you were what a shame <laughs> that's too too funny I guess with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of DiabloCast. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you didn't enjoy it. Be sure to stay tuned or tune in next Friday as we bring you another DiabloCast and we creep ever closer to the official launch of the game. We are one, two, th what is it, three weeks away. I think only two casts, though. Yeah, we're only two DiabloCasts away from the official launch. The game launches on Tuesday the 15th. The DiabloCast right before that will be on Friday the 11th. Wow. It's been going on for a year, and I, I know that you just uh, kind of joined us here in the podcast, Jaded. But it's crazy. It's been a long. It's been a lot of Diablo for a long time. Yeah, we're right at the edge. It's pretty exciting it's stuff. Crazy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. For Jaded, this has been Dennis. We will see you next week. Bye, guys.